so urine collection on the cat without ultrasound is what we're going to do right now. So Angelina, if you'll stretch Riley out here. So we're going to just do a regular old cat stretch. And then what we, we like them in lateral recumbency like this instead of on their back. And then what we'll do is just palpate the bladder right back in this area. And you, usually in the cat, if the bladder's pretty full, it's not too hard to feel. It's a small bladder, but we're going to give it a shot. Like I said, if we have ultrasound, it makes it a lot easier, but if you don't, you can still do it. I can feel the bladder right there. Here's our urine sample. We want to really try to get between four and six milliliters if we can. And then we just let go. We don't want to press on the bladder anymore. We just want to leave it and let her go. So that's urine collection in the cat without ultrasound. We got a nice five milliliters of a very nice sample. All right, so this is Bean. This is actually one of my own cats. And she's volunteered to let us see if we can get urine. Her bladder's uh, very small when I palpate it. It's too small for me to do a blind stick. So this is a great example of where ultrasound can really help you when the bladder's very small. So we'll see, Bob, you like them on their back, huh? Kind of same technique as the dog. See, her bladder's pretty small. Bob, would you point to her bladder right there, mm -hmm. that, that dark area? Once again, you can look for stones and tumors, make sure there are none, which there, there's none. And that's a small bladder, but you can see once again the needle coming right in. Nice shot, Bob. Is this, you're only going to get urine on a cat like this with a bladder that small with ultrasound. That may be about as much as you can get on this one. Uh, and the animals are usually really good. All right. Great. All right, so now we're going to do urine collection on a small dog without ultrasound. And to be honest with you, I would rarely, pretty much never, ever scrub, but we will for camera purposes. It wouldn't hurt to do a quick little scrub. Usually we just wipe with alcohol, but it doesn't hurt to do a little, little mini scrub like so. And then what we like to do on the small dogs, you can certainly lay them on their, back, on their back, but what we like to do is, and Honey's just holding her up by her front legs, and that lets gravity help us. And if you can envision, her bladder should be right around in this area. So we're going to go right above the pubis. So right here's the pubis, so right in this area. And then what I usually do is do an angle about like this. And they're remarkably good, most of them. You can see we muzzled her, which I would if you have any questions. But And then we just let her go. And we got a real nice cystocentesis. We got about six mLs of urine. So on the, on the smaller dogs, if you don't have ultrasound, once again, you can lie them on their back. But we like to do that elevation with the front legs and let gravity work for us. And it uh, usually works real well. So now we're going to do urine collection on a female with no ultrasound. And it's a medium-sized dog, about a 60-pound lab. And what we like to do is if we're going to put dogs on their backs, which can be uncomfortable, we like to use this little couch, which is a little ultrasound couch. But you can use it uh, even if you don't have ultrasound. Just kind of take a nice soft blanket. So there's a nice little cushion, so it's reasonably comfortable. And then let's bring her over. This is my pride and joy. This is my own dog. This is Zildjian, my lab. So she better be good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put her head up to the left. Dr. Griffiskin, we're just going to literally just kind of drop her right in here. Most dogs, when they get, once they get in the couch, will relax. And it's not uncommon for some of them to fall asleep, actually, after a few minutes. You can see she's vicious, vicious creature. Um, and then, so what we'll do is if we're going to collect urine by laying them on their back, and this really only works for females, um, once again, we can palpate where the pelvis is right about here. You can feel the pubis right here. So that we're going to envision that bladder should be in here if it's reasonably full. Uh, what we'll do is we'll use a technique where we take alcohol is what we normally use. And we'll just pour a little alcohol. 
And where it pulls basically is where we're going to put the needle. So you can see it's pulling mainly right in this area. So we're going to take our needle and syringe, go at about a 45 degree angle. And there we go. Little jump there by my own dog. And there we go. Good girl, Zill. Oh, she was very brave. That's really it. We don't hold any pressure on here. We just let it up. If, if you don't get urine the first time, um, one thing you don't want to do is move the needle because you could do some damage to the bladder or maybe even other structures. So if we go in, we don't get any urine. What I did there when she jumped is I just backed up a little bit and you can see that's when the urine flowed. Uh, so if we don't get a urine sample, we're just going to pull out. We can try one more or even two more sticks as long as we're not moving the end of the syringe around. After that, I, I don't want to obviously keep trying to aspirate a sample from the bladder because we don't want to create any problems. And that's when I would ask the owners to probably bring me a urine sample. But with these techniques of cystocentesis, I think you can see it's pretty easy to get urine on most of the dogs. On the large dogs like Savunga or Malamute, uh, we could put her on her back, assuming you know, if we don't have ultrasound, um, we could put her on her back and try to get a urine sample. I find that very unrewarding, especially on a huge dog because the techs are wrestling her and she hates it and we hate it. So one little technique that I developed is to just let her stand and let gravity work for us. So I literally get underneath her like a, <laughs> I guess like a mechanic, if you will. And uh, so I will literally get on the floor just like this. And I'm not joking. And I take our needle and syringe and I let her stand and I feel kind of the landmarks like before, like the, the, the uh, pubic bone, just go cranial to that. And we're gonna just direct the syringe just like we did with the, uh, the small dog. All right, so we're just gonna let gravity help us out and get a real nice urine sample. That's what we like to do on the big dogs so that way we don't have to lay them on their backs and make them uncomfortable and it's a lot easier for us as well. So I recommend you try this on the large dogs that can stand like this. This is Louie and he's an 11 year old German short hair hound mix and he's a great example of a dog that I would like to not lay down and stretch his legs behind him. I mean, you can see he's got probably some, some arthritis. He's got like the skinny little old dog legs. So uh, we put him on the table here. Normally I would just leave him on the floor like we did with Savunga, the big Malamute. But we, we put him on the table just so you can see a little bit better what we're doing. And he's a male, so we thought we'd show you a little technique on the male. So once again, I would just let him stand like this. Instead of trying to stretch him and pin his back legs down, that's not going to help him a whole lot. So, um, and what we'll do is if Dr. Griffiths can just pull his flank back a little bit, like right here, John, right, so we can see. Um, once again, uh, you know, we usually just prep with a little bit of alcohol. Who knows what that's doing? But you certainly can do a little mini surgical scrub if you want. Um, so here's the penis right here. And what we're going to do is kind of the same deal. We're going to imagine where that bladder is. So if back here is the pelvis back here, then the bladder should be right about in this area. And what we'll do is we'll do a blind stick. And if we don't get anything, we're going to withdraw and we can try again. Once again, since we don't have ultrasound, this is what we're going to do. If we have ultrasound, we're going to use the ultrasound. All right, so I'm going to go right about in here. I'm going to insert our needle at an angle about like that. I'm just going to push in. You can see that urine's coming right into the syringe. And you can see it doesn't really bother him at all. We have a nice 6 cc of urine. And what, once again, what I like so much about the standing technique is it doesn't hurt the dog. Because an old dude like this, the last thing he needs us to do is put him on his back and pull his back legs down. And we're going to probably cause more damage doing that than just leave him standing and getting a nice urine sample. So now we're going to demonstrate urine collection using ultrasound. So Dr. Ryder is going to ultrasound the bladder of our greyhound here. The nice advantage of that is if we have a bladder that's small, 
We can see it on ultrasound, and it's usually pretty easy to get urine. The other thing is we can look for stones and tumors, which is a huge advantage with ultrasound, just to make sure there's not some underlying disease. So, Bob, let's go ahead and show them. Usually we put them in dorsal recumbency like this. Sometimes we'll lay them laterally, though, depending on the dog. Put a little alcohol on there, which just helps our ultrasound probe um, with the sound waves. Here you can see the bladder. The bladder is this dark area because urine and fluid shows up black or hypoechoic on the ultrasound. So now Bob's going to go ahead and introduce that needle. We're going to get a urine sample, hopefully. Right here you can see the needle, see the end of the needle, which is kind of...